Sounds like we're live. Should be. Uh. Wait. Yep, there I am. All right, cool. Hey guys. Uh, this is Donkey Kong 64. We're gonna be doing the 100% category, as you can see. Everything is fine. Uh, let me just reset. Um, I'm gonna be playing on the Wii U console. Uh. So there's pretty big differences between the N64, which is the original, and the Wii U. And basically, it's just the lag reduction. Uh, the N64 version lags a lot. And that loses a bunch of time. So 90%, it's, it saves like a minute and a half just by playing on this version. I turn on story skip, which skips all the major cutscenes, which is really nice. Set up my save. All right. Um, here we go. So I guess to start 90%, obviously it's just beating the game as fast as possible. Uh we only need keys three and eight to beat the game. E8 is checked because it's the last key in the game, obviously, and then key three is actually checked because when you turn in the keys, if you turn in key two, it unlocks uh factory and galleon. Or sorry, yeah, factory and galleon. And uh, when you turn in key 3, it actually doesn't unlock or do anything. So, they had to put in a check to make sure that you got key 3. So we will be getting only key 3 and 8, and then beating K. Roll. Alright, uh, got the timer going. We should be good to go. Alright, starting in 3, 2, 1. Normally when you start the game, you have to go talk to Cranky, do the training barrels, you learn some basic moves, and then you head out. But we don't have time for that, so I'm just going to head straight out. By jumping in this water, you can see up so I can dive without diving move, and uh, we're just going to swim through that wall. And we're done. Basically, so there's a bug where... Uh, Whenever you leave C up, you what happens is the camera temporarily adds 180. There's like 360 degrees to your camera. It's, it's so, this run goes by so fast. There's so much I don't even have time to explain. Basically, if you look at a wall, also I am now have control of my Kong while tagging. Don't worry about it. Um, if you look at a certain degree of angle and hit C up, I'm also invisible now. Um, and you hit C up, you have the ability to walk through any wall within a certain range. I think it's a 90 degree angle, also I teleported. Uh, just gonna kick down here. Oh, whoops. I actually have to do that again. Alright, this gives me time to explain. Um, so what I'm doing here is called Tag Barrel Storage. By, uh, Crouching and uncrouching the frame after you enter the tag barrel, which I'm achieving by doing a frame perfect skid jump. You can gain control of your Kong uh, outside of the tag barrel while still in the tag barrel menu. This allows you to get far enough away that it unloads all your textures but keeps your last sword position. And I checked that I got that because the screen will shake and you'll hear that I have control of my camera. This is like, I actually got that like really quick the first time, but this is two frame perfect tricks in a row. Yeah. And now swimming. I'm navigating blind to get far enough away from the tag barrel. And now what happens with your last store position when you grab a ledge, the calculation it does is your store position plus your current position, which causes that. Let me try this again. Better. I pause and unpause there because that resets my stored position, which is going to be important in a second. So yeah, the calculation whenever you grab a ledge and pull yourself up is stored position plus current position. So if my current position is really high compared to my stored position, the distance that I teleport is even greater. 
some of you who know the layout of this game might know what's about to happen. We get over here, tag warp four for later. Very specific spot. And now we're inside Helm Lobby with zero keys. Now, how do we get across this lava? Well, simple. We just fly over there because DK64. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to interrupt my aerial attack with a kick. And what that happens is there's like a set gravity going on in the game at all times. And when you do certain moves, your gravity changes. And by interrupting the aerial with a kick, it sets the wrong gravity value. This is a frame perfect trick, and it's also on a ledge, which is the hardest version of that frame perfect trick. You gotta get this. Well, the goal is you'll definitely know it when you see it. Is that I'm gonna do the kick, fly over to a pipe that has really bad collision, and clip right through it and try to go out of bounds. So do we have just a moment for a couple donations? Yeah, sure. So we have one donation from Anonymous for $10. Thank you so much. There is no comment on that. And then there's also a donation from Avalon for $5 that says, If Seafox can't do the whole DK rap, he's not a real runner. Best game, best host, have fun. <laughs> Oh man, I've heard the DK rap so many times, and I still can't sing all the words. <laughs> Alright, so now you notice that we're in Helm. Um, I'm going to slowly inch my way up the slope by hugging the right wall and jumping at a certain point in his animation. And whenever you hug walls, like the walls in this game are really sticky. And it kind of acts like a low ceiling. You just keep bonking against it and then you slowly climb your way up. And the second slope actually isn't steep. Because they just assumed that you got past the first slope. Now I'm going to do another moon kick. Oh boy. Do one of the harder clips in the entire run. Probably the hardest clip in the entire run. Where we're going to get a moon kick here. Push up against the wall and just kind of hope we go through. The goal of this, obviously, is to get out of bounds. There we go. That was actually pretty good. That is truly like the hardest clip that we do. Alright, I'm gonna navigate very carefully over to Chunky's Banana Metal Room. And we need to do this. We need to get a little bit more height. And we do that by jumping on this very small part out of bounds. There we go. And now we're a bit higher up. Use another visual cue. There's Lanky's room that we're just gonna go underneath. Waiting for an audio cue here. That works too. We're still just a little bit too low, so we're gonna do another height boost. Backflipping inbounds, jumping in between this terminal and this ground, and we're through. Now we're finally high enough. Again, the goal here is just to get key 8 and bounce. And then we're going to do some really crazy stuff in the menu. There we go. There's key 8. The game auto saves after the, about the second donk. <laughs> and there's key 8 in less than 10 minutes. Alright, so... Menu. This menu is something. Uh, I'm gonna start the intro story and then I'm gonna interrupt it in about a six frame window. What that does is it causes it to keep running in the background.
Okay, got that. So you notice that the music stopped. That means it's now running in the background. I'm going to set up the menu for some stuff later. Yes, we're going into multiplayer. Will this run? Turn story skip back on. And re-entering. So, what's going on is the intro story is still playing in the background. And at certain points of the intro, the game is set to try to transfer to the next cutscene location, but we can interrupt that by performing certain actions. The goal is to start a cutscene and then interrupt it with a zone transition. So I'm just going to sit here and play with the butterflies for a little bit. Hanging out, waiting for a certain time. I always go talk to Cranky. So in about 55 seconds since I started, which I got my own timer, it's going to start to fade to black like that. But we hit B, which interrupts it, kicks us out. We have to do that another two times. The goal is to let the entire intro cutscene play, but get some stuff done that we need to get done. There's actually two moves here that we need to beat the game. There's another one here at about 124, 125, but at 124 and a half, I'm going to jump into this barrel. This stuff seems like black magic, but it all makes sense. Trust me. Oh, uh. I missed it. It's a very small window. It's like a half a second window. That's fine though, we can just do it again. You have to backflip at about 124 and a half. So, this gives me a chance to kind of do it again and I'll show you exactly what's going on. So we just go over here. Start it up. There we go. It's a lot of stuff you need to do very rapidly, and the combination of like performing it well and commentating, it's always a bit tricky. So this should put us back in decals. Go in here. It should work out. Go back to Cranky. Get to play with the butterflies again. Always a good time. We're doing all this stuff because we want to trick the game into thinking that we're still in the main menu, which has some really cool side effects and gives us all the moves for all the Kongs that we don't even have yet. Talk to Cranky again. Waiting for the text. Starts to fade out. Interrupt it. Oh, you get to see this funny bug cutscene too. So since the tag barrels are already there, it tries to play the initial cutscene and then it wait, goes like, wait, DK's not here. Zoom. Alright, 124 and a half. We can do this. There we go. Now we're safe. Alright, so oranges, you don't like technically need oranges, but they speed up one of the phases in Carol. You just complete it as fast as possible. The minigame ends when the last orange explodes, so you just chuck them all at the tree. Same concept applies for the barrels. The barrels are extremely important though. You cannot beat Lanky's phase in Carol without these barrels. And you cannot pick barrels up until you do this training barrel. So we're just chucking them all as fast as possible, and the last one we want to make blow up as fast as possible. So we just take it, chuck it at the tree. Alright, that's all the moves that we need. So we're gonna leave. Again, we have to wait till certain points of that cutscene running in the background. And uh, we just get as much done as possible during that time. So while we're waiting, we can go over warp 3 so that later we can use that to get the key roll faster and then at a roughly well, 250 I have to day on a cutscene save quit game this is where the intro cutscene is currently you can see it because I just played the game over cutscene but since we hit quick game you can actually hear the cutscene still going on because of the music glitch we can hit out and interrupt it. It goes back to the main menu, but it is still going in the background. 
Now, here's the important stuff. We look at our file. Loads it into memory. Go and actually start a multiplayer with my second controller. Start it up. Go get four oranges. These four oranges stay in my inventory for the rest of the game. I leave. Go over. Start up factory. This sets the flag that we've seen the first cutscene in factory and I just got all the moves in the game. And that's it. Now have all the moves for all the Kongs, even the ones that we don't have. Now what we're doing is we're waiting to purposefully get pulled into the cutscene and I got like shake. There are three cutscenes that won't pull you in. One is like shake, one is turning night, and one is raining. And I got leg shake. Of course, I got leg shake. Now we just have to wait for another cutscene. Hopefully, it's not turning night. There we go. So now we're good. We are now in a permanent main menu state, but also in the game. And we've loaded all these flags, and now we have all the moves. And the DK Rock is playing in the background, so it's the best. Alright, so here's where, like, the actual intro cutscene is. But we're letting it play out. He's done, and he's actually handstanding. Stretch his arms out. It's so amazing how perfectly the rap lyrics happen to line up with DK's animations there. So what you may not have noticed is I just switched controllers that I'm playing on. That is because we're about to do a trick that involves four frame perfect inputs back to back to back. I briefly mentioned the phase angle earlier, which is how I swam through that wall. You can use that while walking, but it is extremely difficult. I'd hit down for a frame, neutral for a frame, up for a frame, then Z and neutral for a frame. All in perfect succession. So you're gonna hear some clicking probably from my controller. That's me flicking the joystick down and then back up. This trick took me about 15 hours to get my first time. And now we just casually do it in runs. Wow, that was pretty good. Okay, now we get a bounce. And now we're in factory. Switch my controllers back. The dead zone on Wii U VC is very not good. <laughs> but, so I, I like using this controller, but it has rubber pips, which makes it really hard to flip frame perfectly down and up. Alright, tag warp one, that's important. I'm gonna drag this robot over here. Hopefully he gives me a nice little push. That's not the right attack. If you want him to do that attack, it's about a 50-50 chance. Of course. You notice that I can't take damage? That's because I'm the game thinks I'm in the main menu, and so certain things don't work. The game will not save anymore. There we go. This is a little scary. We're just gonna navigate out of bounds. Casually. Pick it roughly the right time. Nice camera flips. And we're gonna go and get key 3 now. Because now we have key 8. All we need is key 3. We have all the moves we need to beat K-Rule. And we're going to do another much easier moon kick. Go over here where the wall's weak, and we're out of bounds. Luckily, the uh, loading zone for bosses extends infinitely down. So we just roll right into it. And now we're going to do K roll, or not K roll, Magic as DK. Which, if you remember how hard this game was, it's tiny, it's uh, much, much harder than DK. Has pretty good luck. This is pretty straightforward though. It's just go in a circle. Try not to let him hit you. Hit the switches as much as possible. You can actually read a few donations here. 
sure. So, right now we don't have any new donations, guys. Please, even one dollar can help. All funds go directly to the COVID response fund at Hackensack Community and Health in order to support patient care and support research for COVID-19 treatments. $3 pays for an N95 mask, $10 pays for an antibody test to help research, so any amount can help. But of course, if you are donating anyway, we do have some incentives for choosing that Pokemon for Puzzle League, which will be late Saturday night, and then coming up very soon, the file name for Ocarina of Time. Currently, Daddy is winning at $15. <laughs> You notice, like, I'm trying to stay as far ahead as possible. He does what's called slow jumps and fast jumps, very appropriately named. So as long as you stay too ahead, which, again, with DK is very difficult, because my only options are kicking and jumping, which I guess I didn't explain that. Every Kong, you can jump out of their B move, which is what makes this even possible with DK, so I kick and jump out of it. It's very easy to miss. It's very easy to kick so low Do that on purpose. Cutscene skip, nice. <laughs> um, that was actually a little scary. You can possibly soft lock the game there by doing that. I don't know why I went for that. Alright, so this is phase four. Phase four, he will to start following you in a beeline, so it makes it even harder to stay ahead of him. So at this point, I'm just gonna go in a circle, and then he'll do like a fast jump every once in a while if I get far enough ahead. But again, it's just hitting the switches, not falling like I did earlier. And looking for the switch. Oh, bad luck. It is unfortunately completely RNG where the switches pop up. You can manipulate it, theoretically, but it's it's very complicated. Alright, grabbing the key. Nice sideways dance, and we're good. We avoided the only soft lock in this run. So, I mentioned earlier that there's a side effect of main enemy moves. You cannot pause the game. Which means you're stuck there unless you hit warp 1 to get out. Which I have forgotten that many times. And it's very unfortunate <laughs> that your run just dies because you can't leave the level. That's it. That's key 8 from Helm. Key 3 from Factory. We unlocked all the moves because of the stuff we did in the menu. And now we're just going to go turn in the keys. Turn to key Lemzy for the first time. The last time. K roll is pretty straightforward. There's a lot of like small tech you see me doing. Um, so when you run this game on N64, I'll just mention it again. N64 lags a lot. This game wasn't optimized super great. And the difference just on any percent is about a minute and a half just in lag in a 25-ish minute category. You save a minute and a half in lag. Our middle category, no levels early, it saves about 10 minutes, and in 101%, it saves 20 to 25 minutes just in lag. So it's. A lot of people still play an N64 because the controls on the Wii U and the input delay are pretty atrocious, but. It is faster, so. Gotta go fast. So I turn in key 3 and 8, and look at that, the, the ship's here. And though we never freed Kate Lumsey, he never knocked it down. So you'll see me like do uh, some weird camera turns. Those are lag reduction strats from when I ran this on N64 years ago for a long time. I just still kind of do them out of habit, in case I ever do go back to the N64. I do every once in a while. Yeah, 
That's pretty, pretty straightforward. The first phase is just shooting K-Roll out of the uh, barrel. The barrel phases are all set, so I know the counts, so I know exactly when to shoot. We base them off of times he punches. And we'll just kind of go from there, place to place, doing them all as fast as we can. An optimal run, the K rule fight, the final boss fight, is half the run. K rule is such a long fight, and we have no skips for this fight yet. After all these years, we have not found a way to skip a single phase. Camera away from the shockwaves on N64 lag a bunch. One, two, five. Three. Two, three, four, five, six. It, I remember having a lot of trouble doing that as a kid, but we don't need reaction time because <laughs> it's the same. That's easy. Alright, I see some people asking. So I got key 8 uh, by doing tag barrel storage and doing all that teleporting stuff at the very beginning of the run. Uh, I navigated through Helm out of bounds. That's how I got that one. Uh, key 3 you need because key three doesn't actually uh do anything in the run even casually it doesn't unlock any levels so they knew that they had to check to make sure the player got it good and so we have to get it in the runs what i'm trying to do here is the way bullet projectiles spawn is they spawn at the end of the gun so if you stick the gun inside walls and fire, the bull will actually spawn on the other side of the wall. I'm trying to shoot through the wall, you can see it there. There we go, that's perfect. Shoot through the wall in the first shot, turn slightly and shoot the other switch. Again, the controls on Wii U are not great. That was good. And so now, like, Rocket Barrel in general always had pretty wonky controls, and now adding the fact that the game doesn't lag actually affects controls a lot. They really expected the lag to be there, so you have the time to react to what you're doing. But with no lag, everything is so fast that really small adjustments are extremely difficult normally. And then they add in the fact that the Wii U dead zone is just incorrect. It's flat out wrong. Which makes small adjustments next to impossible. My angle. This is why we needed uh, the barrel. barrel. We would not be able to pick up that barrel. So I'm now being all these Kongs for the first time, and because of the stuff I did in the menu, we have all the Kongs moves I could have done. have all the stuff I could have done. I'll get down. Go around them. We have a lot of this stuff. Oh, uh, my voice robotic. <laughs> Alright, that should have fixed it. <laughs> I have this bug that happens like once a month, and of course it happens now. Uh, I don't really know what causes it. It's, uh, it's something to do with my voice software. Could be good now. You good? Alright, cool. <laughs> 
that that literally ha it happens once a month, and it would happen during this. At least I know how to fix it. Also, I did that phase perfectly, and I was troubleshooting in the middle of it, so that's cool. Every boss has like a set. Every phase of this has like its own kind of set cycle almost. So like we know exactly how to pick up and throw those barrels. Do it right. Tiny phase is unfortunately the slowest and the most set in its ways. It's four phases of toe shooting, which funnily actually no sorry. In this route we do have Tiny's gun. There is a route of any percent where we don't have Tiny's gun. But the game forces you to pull out Tiny's gun anyway, and it has some like really weird side effects, like you can't shoot while running. You have to be completely still to shoot the toes. Well, you can throw an orange, which is why we got the oranges. Throwing an orange in the final hit of each toe is slightly faster. I'm just gonna go look in the sky, so to reduce some lag. That isn't even there on VC, but out of habit. Beating the game, entering Tiny Barrel for the first time. Squawks tells us how to use it. Thanks, Squawks. Do we have just a moment for one donation? Yep. We have a huge donation by DM Joey for $1,000. Oh my gosh. And the comment is... From the wallet of a longtime fan of C Fox and an even longer fan of helping those in need. If you want the truth, I'm just grateful to be given a position that makes it capable for me to sit in and donate some monkey in support of a prime eight out of eight charity event and worthwhile cause. Oh wow. Yeah, Joey's been a longtime watcher. Dude, that's so generous. Thank you so much. We also have a donation from Coca for $5. It says, my face when they upload the new Corona strats for like any percent. And another one from TikToks123 for $5 saying, here you go, hope this is helping a little. And definitely any amount helps, even $1. Yeah, this fight has always been kind of confusing. I don't know why shooting his toes causes him to get knocked out, but sure. The toes are also on the same cycle every time, so I pretty much know exactly when and where to throw the oranges. Last phase, almost there. We didn't get unlucky, which is good. He can finish on the corner that you're at, which makes you have to walk around him, which wastes like three seconds. That's about the only RNG in this entire fight, though, which is kind of nice. there because why not they don't do any like different amounts of damage would have been very nice if they did this is like this is the last things in this game that we really want to break Halo was so long like I said it, it takes up half of the any percent run we could find a way to skip into later phases or even skip parts of phases would be great So this is the last phase. Uh, the timing will stop when I do the final punch. I guess I actually have control, if that's right. <laughs> no, uh, goal is to hit these switches, which spawns these invisible pads. Oof, that was close. 
spawns this barrel makes me big she allows me to punch him in the face and all these moves for a Kong that we've never tagged and never unlocked because of the main menu stuff we set all these flags what happens I guess I explain that in a bit more detail now by entering the factory fight the game uh, will say okay you're entering this fight let's load the data for the moves that you need to beat this fight and for whatever reason even though it's only the third boss fight in the game they think you need moves that you don't even get until like castle so they just load all those moves and since we're in this weird state where we're like in, we've loaded the file but we're still in the main menu it just saves that to the it doesn't like save it to the file but it loads it in memory so that we can use it like when this run ends and I try to go to that file, the file will say that I've only played like eight minutes. Cause that's how long it took me to do the beginning stuff. It's very, very useful and a very powerful trick. All right, and that's it. Final punch. That's good. That was really awkward for sub 35, so that was good. And that's it. This game that is said to take supposed to take about 30 hours is now done in 34 minutes. I watch this cutscene with all these characters that we've never seen before. Don't know who any of these people are. Shoutouts you want to do? Um, I guess just shout out to you guys. Thanks for letting me do this. It's a lot of fun. It's a really good game, the speedrun. It's really cool showing how broken this game is and having a platform to do that and having a platform that's, you know, for a great, amazing, important cause, especially right now. It's, it's a lot of fun. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for having me on. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you for running. It was really great to watch. And so just a reminder to everyone who's watching right now, we do have uh, some donation incentives, including uh, the file they for Ocarina of Time, which is coming up in just a few games. Currently, Daddy is winning at $15, so if you want to put in your vote on what the file name should be, go ahead and go to tiltify.com slash at speedrun in order to donate, and all funds will go directly to the Corona Relief Fund from Hackensack Meridian Health Center. Go ahead, we're going to have a very brief break so you can get a drink, go to the bathroom, and then we'll see you for our next game, which is Kirby Air Rides.